Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here thanks for joining me I'm Katie and today let's talk about some ink shall we so as we all know we're in the month of September which means next month is October which also means oh it's Inktober right so I'm still very much in the throes of debating with myself whether to do it or not. The chances are I probably will. So I thought, let's just brush up on some inking techniques anyway. So I haven't done anything like this for quite, quite a long time, but it is a style and a technique I used to use quite a lot a few years back. I pre-sketched out my design and decided to ink it and share this whole experience with you and I've used a variety of techniques to get everything down on paper. The paper I've used is the Botanical Hot Press watercolour paper and I have featured that in one of my videos where I compare watercolour paper so please do check that out. I picked it because it's got a suit it, to me it feels like there's a surface of cartridge paper which is very nice to draw on and no nibs are going to scratch or pull on the paper but it can also take a good amount of ink on the page which is what i'm doing right now to add the initial marks down i'm using a fine brush it's not quite a rigor brush but it's it's thin enough for it to behave like one and once i've got the outlines down i'm filling in those areas using a round brush and the black indian ink to fill that area the black indian ink i'm using is by winsor and newton and it's a bit of a good all-rounder for me and i also use some faber castell pit markers because they contain indian ink as well i also use a Duint line making pen in gray and i do believe i use a micron pen just for one or two details where it's not next to large areas where i've used the indian ink so you, you can't you can't really tell that they're different i also wanted to use the dip ink techniques so i could just demonstrate them to you really the stage right now i'm using a rigor brush with a round brush and i find the rigor brush really helpful for long sweeping areas yeah i could do this with the faber castell pit brush marker and get a nice consistent line but there's just something i don't know there's just something quite lovely about using the rigor brush if you've not used one before or if you have and found them pretty frustrating i don't blame you there is quite a learning curve to it for me i like to say a good amount of ink on there but not to the point where it's literally dripping off the brush you don't want that you're going to lose your control but a nice generous amount so you've got enough on there to do one long flowing line I recommend lots of practice before you commit to an art piece using them and as well it's really important the direction in which you use it so you want to be pulling the brush you want to be pulling the brush towards you rather than pushing it away from you if you push the brush on the paper you're gonna have really uneven lines your ink's gonna splatter and you're gonna ruin your piece so pull the brush towards you use the brush in a pulling motion rather than a pushing one perhaps change to a fine detail brush for little areas or places where you've got tiny tiny curves and corners to do but for long sweeping lines I absolutely love it. It gets the job done quickly and it's quite neat. And it was ideal for this picture I've done here. I used the round brush to fill in the larger blocked out areas. And again, it's a nice even coverage, which is what I wanted to achieve. And it's also quite convenient for me because it doesn't take as long. And I tend to find when I use the liner pens, even the brush tip one, you can still get some streaky areas and it doesn't matter how many times you go over it, sometimes it just won't take. So using the brush and ink technique works perfectly for those large areas. Now for those finer details, 
liner pens all the, all the way, all the way. And they're just ideal for filling in perhaps tiny little gaps that are going to be too large for the brush. And also they are perfect for tidying up areas where maybe your rigger brush, even though you say you're very experienced with them, but sometimes it still misbehaves. It's very good for just tidying them up too. I love the versatility of liner pens though and I use a couple of techniques on here. I obviously go in there and do the line work but I also utilise the fact that I've got different nib sizes to create different marks which is really important for creating different levels of tone and getting some of those values in there. Of course with this being an Art Nouveau style I didn't want to overdo it with the tone but I at least wanted to give it some depth because she was looking terribly flat. A great way of adding texture is quite simply just add lots of little lines like I did on the leaves of these ferns here and it just adds a little bit of something extra rather than it just being completely flat and I recommend experimenting and just trying different types of mark making. I also benefited as well from using a great liner pen which is by Durant and I think it's from the line maker range but I'm not entirely sure I've had this pen for quite a while and I just thought that was ideal just to add a little bit of definition to the line work at the bottom just to make them a little bit more 3D. I also used a black Indian ink pen with this but to go in there and give it a little bit more depth I do use that grey pen and it's great it just adds that detail but it just shows there's a difference and it's not quite so solid. Another favourite mark making technique of mine is stippling and if you don't know what that is well it's lots and lots and lots of dots. This is great to add a different tonal areas without fully committing to blocks of colour and I think it can look so pretty as well. If you're going to use stippling and you've got more than one size nib pen at hand that is great because you can build up dense areas without having to do quite so many dots but a word of advice try not to make it too apparent. You'll notice on this video when I do the inside of the character's sleeves and certain areas of the dress, I use a thicker pen just to add a bit more depth into it, but I merge it in with the finer dots so much that you can't quite tell or it doesn't quite stand out as much and that's what I think looks really nice when you stipple. If you can just make it as subtle as possible it looks really really nice and it's a really effective way to just add a bit of depth and a bit of definition again without committing to blocks of colour. Anyway I think I've given quite a bit of advice here I'm still mulling over whether to do Inktober or not. I'd love to hear in the comments if you're considering it. Have you ever completed an Inktober before? And anything else you've got to add on the matter. I'm just going to let this video play out and I will catch back up with you towards the end.
so it's just time for the signature using a white gel pen which I always think is pretty useful to have. I really like how something as simplistic as just black ink with a hint of grey ink can create such an impactful piece. I do hope you've enjoyed this video, as always I hope you found it useful too and if you have enjoyed it please give me a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. If you're new here as well why not subscribe and I will see you lovely lot on the next video. Bye!